Holly and Jeremy, there's a, there's a huge opportunity to go to extend your brands, what you're already doing with the playlist and that, the information aggregation that you're doing, to maybe move into a subscription model. Is, are there any of those sort of aspirations on the horizon for you? I'm not going to speak for Jeremy. For us, um, at least today, our model is about music discovery and specifically not music consumption. Um, you know, there are a lot of, uh, I think there's about 400,000 full song tracks that artists have posted on our service, but there's many, many more. Uh, you know, the majority of major label catalog is there in 30 second sample format. So you'd really, you know, as a music consumption experience, you'd really need to have AED to enjoy the, uh, the experience on I Like Today. Um, and uh, we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't yet seen a model that seems to make sense for everybody in the subscription world. Um, you know, in terms of the labels getting what they need and the consumer getting a price they can, you know, live with and so on. Um, so right now our model is music discovery. If you, you know, if you discover one thing that you love through I Like, let's say once a week, we've done our role and, you know, we, we link to buy that on iTunes or buy it on Ticketmaster, whether it's a song or a ticket. Um, and we're, uh, we're currently one of the top referrers of traffic to iTunes. Um, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's kind of up there in the top three or four. Uh, we're the number two largest referrer of traffic to Ticketmaster behind AOL. I think Jeremy and we are both amongst the top referrers of uh, traffic to uh, ringtone subscriptions. So we are driving massive, massive volumes of consumers to purchase music-related things, and we currently get a fee from, from those referrals. Um, but we also do think there's a lot of upside in advertising around all of this. Um, both for us and for the artists. Uh, there's tons of major label artists now really viewing their business as being not just about you know, recording music, but being a media brand and being a, you know, a place where they can make money via advertising, you know, whether it's through their recorded music, through just their blogs or their messaging, or around their events. And they view I Like and MySpace and their own website all essentially as syndication outlets of their TV channel, if you will. Uh, you know, one, one big difference between us and MySpace from a policy standpoint is MySpace's terms of use technically say you're not supposed to use your MySpace profile to make money. Um, I'm not sure how any artist really can kind of live with that, but that's the, a technicality, I suppose. With us, it's kind of the opposite. We absolutely expect that the only reason an artist would be creating presence with I Like would be to make money. If they want to post ads on it, by all means, go ahead and do so and keep the revenue. And really, it's going to be a question of do we provide additional technology to help them sell advertising or place advertising or measure it. We don't have any of that today, but at least from a policy standpoint, our belief is that that's you know, a revenue channel for the artist. And we'll also have ad spots of our own, which we sell on our own. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, money to be made in advertising around music, not necessarily around ad-supported music consumption, because I, like I said before, I think that business model for that is in terms of the royalty rates is going to be a bit trickier, but just advertising around the discovery process. Or when somebody says, I really love this artist, you know, and they're creating a playlist or they're browsing concert listings, you know, I think there's absolutely opportunities to advertise around that as well. Yeah, and similarly, we view our users as kind of a funnel. Uh, there's a large base at the top that, you know, might, might not ever buy music per se, music downloads, but uh, we, as Alex said, we sell, we're one of uh, Thumbplay's top referrers, or one of iTunes' top referrers, I'm not sure which order, um, uh, we, we fall into that, but I mean, we sell hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in, in that kind of merchandise, and um, we're exploring opportunities for you know, concert tickets and for um, merchandise, and anything that goes around the artist brand or whatnot. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that those, the top, the top of our funnel, they still will spend money. Um, and then the funnel kind of goes down to people who have purchased the music and it'll go all the way down. We do think subscription is, you know, part of our future. We're trying to explore that and figure out how to, how to solve the issues that, um, that was mentioned earlier about, you know, interoperability of subscription. Okay, you pay five bucks a month, but I don't be locked into the playlist.com service. I'm going to take it down, you know, to Rhapsody or whatnot. So there's some big issues to solve, but I do see that that's a, a big thing. But, uh, but again, advertising, um, to disagree with the point earlier, that advertising won't work. Um, I think it will. I think, I think the fact of the matter is, is that 
what music you like tells a lot about you as a person. We can have hyper-targeted ads, and we know there's been study after study saying if you like this kind of music and this kind of music, you know, you're, you're 20 times more likely to buy this kind of vodka or this kind of vodka. Is not a good example for our users, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Good example for our audience. You're on not for our audience. I don't have this so. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that the subscription downloads and everything, any way you can make money around uh, the music to help subsidize the costs of the music. 